we're going to try to show you how you can make something useful out of these old political signs that everybody gets tired of seeing all the time. It's a plastic, like it's corrugated, and we're going to make some purple martin houses out of it. Here's what the boxes are going to look like after we get done. So, to start with, we've got the patterns drawn out. Here's the pieces we're using for a whole house. This is the, the top and the sides. This is the bottom, which is real simple. Here's the back, the tab sticking out. It's, I make them a half inch. Here's the front again. We're making the hole one and a quarter inches tall by three inches wide. So let's start out. Let's, let's cut one of these off. And all we're using just regular old tin snips to cut across these things. Once you get that cut, this is going to be three sides of your house. And we're going to fold it. You make your first one, you can use that for a pattern. Once you get your pattern, it's a lot quicker and easier. You can fold this stuff by just putting a, a crease. Now, I just use my thumbnail, you can use something else. But it's, it's like creasing like that. We're trying to get it where it's going to be seven inches wide from here to here. The exact dimensions aren't necessarily that important other than you just need to get stuff to fit together. So you see like that, we're going to have three sides there so that there's no seams to leak there. And that makes it a lot more waterproof for the bird. Then we've got these, the backs on the side here. Cut them off of here. Now when, when you're cutting across the grid, you use them tents there. When you're cutting with the grid, you just take like the, uh, the I'm using exacto knife here, and you just take and slice through it. And it it's like you just don't try to go through all at once. You gotta go through one layer at a time. These are already marked out. These, so these are, have tabs put on them to lock these houses together. These in, between these tabs, we'll just cut it out of here with an exacto knife. You might find some other way to cut it, but this has worked pretty well for me. So that's going to be the front, and then after we put the hole in it, we'll be ready to show you how the house goes together. So you see, there's all there is to, to the back. Now I've got a front here where I've already cut the hole in it. These holes, they're three inches by an inch and a quarter. If you get much bigger than an inch and a quarter, starlings will get in them. You get much smaller, and you'll have martins that can't get you want to use the grid pattern and to try to space the thing in there. And I'm, I'm just drawing this one on here. So there's where the hole's going to be, and I'll just cut it out here real quick. Okay, there, there's the hole. And I normally double check that and make sure it's an inch and a quarter. That looks like it'll work. So here we've got the house now. Like where we bent this one, we'll, we got to mark it off where we're going to put these tabs. I normally set the back end in a half inch. And I normally set the front end in two inches. But that'll leave you a seven by nine compartment when this is done. And you see I've got these pieces here. Now when you can make a pattern where you can mark these all out. Initially, on the first one, I normally just set it right up there like that. And I can just mark it here. Where this thing goes. The 
read I fold that over before I mark it because if you don't it'll end up that it'll it'll push down it won't line up the same now we'll mark where the back goes or the tab Okay, that's where they'll go. I cut these out all the, like right here. I'm just cutting them out with an exacto knife. We want to make each one of those slots about an eighth of an inch wide. You can cut these out with a Dremel tool if you got to have one with a proper bit. So there we've got it cut. So if I've cut this right, this should just go together like this. Let's get it turned around right. You'd be surprised how well these stick together when you get it all put it put it there you see you've got the box and you got a really lightweight box a lot sturdier than you might think so now that we've got that I'm going to show you how we put the how they're put together these I use these are from a deck board that I've ripped in the end of one inch squares you could probably buy some one by ones I like these deck boards because they're really durable hold up really well really strong they're treated and it's like they're marked out like at seven by seven inch square I've marked these out and found the center these are 30 inches long so and you find the center at 15 and then this is seven inches and the mark there so then you just take them Line your marks up here. All four of these pieces are marked. And you get them reasonably square. And you want them seven inches apart on each end. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get these squared out. We got a light out there, so now then we're just gonna make sure. So basically, we're making a frame like this, and then the houses are gonna be attached on here. We have these here ready to to go. See a mark. See these houses sit on there like that. The back corners here, they have to be cut out to go down there. So we cut it out there. I just marked it with them boards that sits on there so it'll set down. Now when I assemble these, I normally you see, I just screwed these together. You could recess this or something to make it level, but I, I haven't bothered to do that. These houses will just sit down on. I always start with the low layer first. Now we're going to put these together. These are just some three quarter inch screws. These are the bottoms of the house. The way this works, it sits in there. The bottom will slide in here like that. So we're going to attach these to the frame now. This box is set back there. We just simply put a screw. So there's the first house attached. That's all it takes. And then this bottom 
So make sure you got it splashed there and you slide her in and out. So you slide it all the way to the back there. Try not to totally smash your plastic there when you put the screws in. Okay, so that one you okay. cut. Let's see. Or we'll clean these out, we just pull that out. Or for the winter, you pull that out. The nest comes out and be ready to go. We attach the two lower sides and then we'll come back and attach the ones on the so tight you can't slide it. So there we've got the four houses put together. Now then I'll show you how we put them on the pole to start with. I've got these pieces cut. These are just seven by seven inch squares. We mount them on a piece of two inch PVC pipe. And we mount them like you see back there on a one and a half inch steel pipe. This will fit perfectly slide down over it. That helps keep it lightweight and easy to work with. So we've taken these are seven inch by seven inch square. I normally cut two, turn them opposite directions with the grid and slide them and to make that pattern you just make sure you get it in the center and just take and set the PVC pipe on there and trace around it. Then what we're going to do the reason for this, this will keep the houses from rocking on the pole. And they're going to set in there like that. I just go to attach these with some one inch screws. I'll go ahead and start the screws right here. A piece of PVC pipe makes it sure that it keeps the holes lined up. Now I've got the screw started, you have a hard time seeing it, but all I'm doing is screwing it down to that wooden frame. Okay, so you can see we've got that screwed in here into that frame, and that there will make it so it won't rock. So then when we get ready to tax this, it's going to be mounted on a PVC pipe. The PVC pipe keeps it light. It also makes a pretty good predator guard. It's the best I've ever seen. Snakes don't seem to be able to climb. You can take and level these up. I made these brackets. They're made out of a heavy, just some scrap tin I've got around here. These will also be attached with the a one inch screw. We just put one of these on each side of this. And then, after we get that, we're gonna put a hose clamp on here to tighten it down and hold it in place, to keep it from spinning or slipping. And it's definitely important to not have Martin houses spinning around. Now, I haven't got a level with me, but a lot of times I use use a level for this. You just square it up, and I can take that, tighten it up, and there you have your house attached and ready to put up. I say these bottoms will slide out here to clean the house out. Normally I haven't done it here now, but I'll take and use a little short screw to put right in here. The screw into that, just a little short one to, to like to keep it from being able to slide out. So that's really all there is to the house. I haven't completely finished these painting wise. That we paint them on the inside and the outside and that actually seems to be important because 
The, I had some I tried not painting much and the Martin didn't seem to want to use them as well. But when you paint them inside and out both with a, just white latex paint, blocks the light, not as much light gets in there and that, that seems to, they, they prefer that. Last thing I want to talk about here is the little bit about the pipe. We're not going to go up there and the Martins are in peak incubation right now, so I ain't going to mess with them. The PVC pipe, you notice, they have about three extra feet or so below the bottom for the Predator Guard. If you look close, you can see we drill a, like a hole, like about a 5 16 inch hole through the steel pipe and, and the PVC and then put a pin there to hold it. And so all you have to do to raise them and lower them is pull that pin out. We're using a one and a half inch steel pipe. I strongly recommend that. These particular poles, I cut them 15 feet long and they're set. I put a sleeve in the bottom, a metal, another metal pipe that the, that the one and a half inch pipe slides into two feet long and it's got a hole drilled in it with a bolt to hold them down there to keep them from turning and it's set it with concrete. The PVC pipe that we're using is a two inch light drain pipe and it'll fit perfect over. When we talk about an inch and a half pipe that, on that steel pipe, that's the inside diameter. So the actual outside diameter is more like an inch and three quarters or so. And the PVC pipe is the same way. The inside diameter is two inches. Would recommend using that pipe like that. It keeps your house as easy to raise and lower and lightweight. Then if you want, you can add extra layers underneath.